Hi guys, welcome to the Ghosts podcast. It's me, Rachel, your favorite podcast host, and I'm here with Mia. Why do you always, <laughs> why do you always introduce me like I'm your guest? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're here with me, 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 the baddest bee. I can't figure anything else, but yeah. Um. So yeah, we're here for episode thirty-three. Yeah, I think it's 33. Let me have a look. Jeez. Well, it's, 30, it's 33 anyway. We're saying it's 33. It is um, 33, yeah. Great. Um, so today we're going to be talking about mental health um, because it is Mental, mental health, health Awareness, awareness week. week 2020. The theme this year is... Kindness. K-I-N-D-N-E-S-S. So yeah, that's what we're going to be touching on, guys. We have some very exciting guests. So thank you for touching that button, coming to join us. And yeah, that. let's get into this. Okay, so we're here with guest numero uno. Ted. Some of you might know him as Ted. <laughs> some of you might know him as Hamza. I mean, we only found out his name was Hamza like two days ago. But here we are. We're yeah. very privileged to have him here today. And we're going to have a lovely conversation with him. Ted, is there anything that you want to say about yourself before we continue and jump into this conversation? Uh, I just want to say I did let Rachel know my government name not some time ago, but she kind of forgot. So we move. Um, it's lovely to be here. And on, Wait, uh, so you already had that conversation with Rachel about your name? It just came up like time ago, but it was them ones where it was just embedded in the conversation that I didn't expect. <laughs> I just slightly dropped it. But it wasn't the main focus, but yeah, we move. <laughs> <laughs> we move in here. Keep going. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> this is not <laughs> okay, right. Anyway, so I always know like every time I'm talking to Hamza, the conversations that we have about mental health and all that, I'm always like, whoa, like it blows my mind. So when we decided we were going to do this podcast, I was like, Mia, I know the perfect person. Wasn't I? You were. She did say that. She did. Yeah. I love the so, support. Yeah. And, I, and I was like, is that the guy who's at the birthday of Bonanza? And then yeah. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so how's it, why is mental health so important to you? Um, and speaking about it. You know, um, so some relevant backstory, I feel. I think when people have a image of what mental health is like and saw people effects, there's a very, there's a character of kind of the people effects as being very weak minded, fake sets stereotype, especially amongst men. They typically think that it's very emotional, weak men that sort of fall away. And um, in my experience, so I've suffered with bouts of uh, depression, suicidal thoughts since the age of like 12, 11. And it's really common. I didn't understand how common it was in men, but the common thing we get is like, oh, tough it out, you know, it just happens here and then. Later, I then came to learn that three quarters of all suicide is accounted for by men. And there's not a lot of risk intervention strategies. Like, for instance, um, I read a report by the Office of National Statistics, and it said something like, in 1982, the um, rates for men, for male suicide, was about. I believe 19.5 deaths per 100,000. And even though it's 2018 now, it's only 17.2. It's only gone down by about a mean number of two. Whereas for women, it's gone from 10.6 in 1982 till about 5.6. Mm. And the number has never gone back to double digits ever again. It's remained single digits for women and it hasn't changed ever. And that's an amazing thing. Um, we've come a long way when it comes to um, and I don't mean to gender the issue, but there is a significant disparity because the extremes of what happens, because whilst a lot of women face significant issues and like it's undoubt undoubtable, men tend to take the more extreme option. So there's a common phrase that women attempt suicide more, men actually do it. Yeah, and I saw this online and it's, we're literally losing men. Like they're literally killing themselves and dying. Mm. So I think that's a major thing to do. What you're saying is act very true. And yeah. I read this report, it was like, I think 75% of all suicides across the world are from men, something like that. And I was mm. just, it's astounding that there's like a global 
there's very traditional gender norms that have impacted mental health progression. And I think I was in a discussion with my friends the other day and um, he is a very close friend of mine, Caribbean guy. And I feel a bit choked up saying this, man. I'm, I just didn't know he had it. He um, was dealing with suicidal thoughts for a very long time and he was having anxiety attacks. I've known this guy for absolutely years and he's always been the most happy-go-lucky person I've ever met. And when he told me that, it was, in, it was in response to a story I put up about um, if a guy needs to have a chat, I'm down for a chat. And he popped up to me and it was blew my mind. And then we had a long phone conversation, about four or five hours. And um, afterwards, I just felt like, wow, I, I haven't even, there's, we're not even going to scratch the surface here. And it's really sad because in the particular area I live in, there's a lot of BME people and the incidence rates of suicidal thoughts and mental health is so high mm. yet the intervention rates are really low because there's so many stigmas traditional gender roles they have to abide by just so much stuff in the, in the way for them that resolving it is just no problem Therefore, like you say with bme people culturally it's such a mad thing you just say that's not a thing maybe just go pray on it or mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, that's just not the way we do things. It's such a taboo yeah. topic to speak about. So if you want to do something, you just wouldn't maybe go to your parents, or your grandparents, because they're just like, oh, I don't know, just suck it yeah. up or something. And that's such a difficult conversation to have when you really are feeling not just sad. It's so much deeper than sad. You're constantly in that very deep, dark pit or you're anxious and you're like, okay, now what? It's like, just get on with life. And it's, especially with men, even, and yeah, we are putting a gender on it now because men are just told, um, be a man or, I don't know. Man up and but, yeah, with it. Like it's You're stronger it, than that or something. Yeah. And it's such, it's a difficult one. It's, it just you goes know. back to the stereotype, doesn't it? Of like, of men being the strong ones and women maybe mm. not being as strong or being more emotional. That then yeah. That yeah. makes people think that men can't feel emotion and can't understand these yeah. things. You know, um, I think the first key step is is um, reconciling gender differences for a lot of people because when I reference, um, so I have this discussion with people about, uh, and especially this comes to more religious people about how different men and women are and how, um, like, I say specifically, like I say for me at least, um, I came from a Muslim background. Uh, scripturally speaking, there is an emphasis towards male dominance and female subservience. And... When later on I looked at, for instance, there's, there's significant data, like a 2005 study that showed men and women when it comes to aspects of personality, leadership, and um, social making are very similar. It's only in terms of the extremes that men tend to occupy the extremes much more than women do. Uh, typically, that's biological features, maybe testosterone or other stuff like that affects it, but that's all speculative. And um, I try to explain to people, like, the differences we have are very much manifested from our own determined gender norms, like... Um, how women behave in somewhere like the Philippines is going to be drastically different to where, how women behave in the Caribbean compared to how women behave in um, the West and likewise for men as well. And um, debunking some of these traditional gender norms is very, very important because sometimes you feel like you're held hostage by them. That you that's have to abide by them. Good, that's such a good yeah. way of putting it. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Something. And now you have me thinking, I'm like, wow, that is very true. Because I've never actually thought about it that deeply. But it's very... See, yeah, my, my, I said this the once uh, about some two people talking about traditional gender norms and yeah. everything. My friend just said to me once, he was like, it just sounds like peer pressure from your ancestors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, That's such, a, that's such yeah. a good way to phrase it. It just, it goes down it, just trickles down for generations and generations mm -hmm. and it's until somebody somebody decides to stop it but then it's like how do you do that who's going to be that person how do you then pass on the the other come out the other side of it and pass that on for other generations because like mm -hmm. Rich said otherwise it's just gonna it's just gonna carry on yeah. and i guess that's like you have to unlearn things when you're like actually that's not the way i want to do things and that's actually not right. And I'm sure we've all done that in some part of our life. It's like, no, as much as you love your family and you love where you're from and the things that you do, you have to unlearn and realize, I want to do things a little bit differently. And that's not the path that I want to go down. For you, again, yeah. for your own mental health and well-being. Yeah, and it doesn't help that, especially from BME cultures, there is um, 
so in psychology, it's typically called collectivist cultures. So mm-hmm. the opinions of the group outweigh the opinions of yourself as an individual. And unfortunately, when it comes to stuff like this, you are much held hostage to the values of the group. And when you want to detach from some of the traditional cultural norms of mental health and sickness and um, for your feelings, they will penalize you for it. There's people that are being penalized simply for saying, I have depression. And then like, I was reading a um, report in, for instance, in America, and then um, this uh, one uh, guy said it, and then his mom was like, oh, we black, we don't get that. I was like, what the? Uh, that's a very racialized way of viewing mental health like this. Some people will consider it a issue that affects the other community, not ours. That's not us, that's, that's them. That's yeah. them, they're weak. Yeah. That's like the whole thing, like, oh, that could never be me, until then yeah. it is you, mm. and then you're like, oh shit that's me and i think uh, black culture um as well like there there is that whole thing of like and even in women like being like a strong black woman and and it's so detrimental because you feel like you said you feel like you have to abide by these laws of culture Mm. when really it's like okay it's okay to not be okay and to need help and to ask for it um Mm -hmm. but yeah it's just i guess stepping over that boundary that is that is the hard part. You know, even when, like, uh, I was reading a report, um, I think it was a 2008 study that was talking about, uh, like, um, the link between, like, home stability and suicide. And honestly, one of the gr- growing issues, I'd say, I, particularly I'm talking about the West uh, as we live in, is the issue of single parent households and um, absentee, for, father absenteeism from the household as well. And if you think about, like, the, so um, the reference, the study referenced the fact that people, especially like um, men as, or boys as well, that don't have father m- m- father models in their life, uh, male role models, will develop like this spiraling sense of self and identity that just goes out the window, and they'll just want to align with every single group they've ever As someone who came from that sort of background as well, I can tell you anecdotally that you do will you will tend to spiral to the most influential thing in the community, and you will just you will give up your sense of individualness just to fit in and i know this is speaking broader than just mental health but um obviously having parents does come into when you're a child in your formative years and having parents who are just there for you mm-hmm. is a really big thing therefore that's yeah it's so many things that factor in to different things and it's like you know when people say oh it's not that deep or yeah. there are so many things that factor and everything kind of fits in like a puzzle piece and it's just so many different things it kind of blows my mind sometimes and i'm just like wow how different people react to different situations and one person might be fine but then it's like you say there's a study but not everybody will react in that same way so it's like it's like no one size fits all yeah the way i see it's sort of like a jenga block and um there's all these parts and pieces um, whether it's your home, your um, the way you perceive yourself, the people around you, your culture, your religious beliefs, whatever, something just has to misalign, and the whole block will come tumbling. Ooh. I really felt that. That kind of gave me like a little, <laughs> a little shiver because that's so true. All it takes is like a, a little thing. Yeah. And I think just... as well, like you said, like with parents, like as a parent like obviously I'm not a a parent but like you can imagine that like if your kid was maybe like oh like I'm not really I don't want to go to school today like I don't feel like I want to do it I don't feel like I mentally want to do this like as a parent you probably just straight away be like oh come on go in see how you feel later like if it's not if if your child hasn't got a temperature or they're not being sick or something like that like then you're probably just like oh whatever they just fancy they just fancy a day of school when really like maybe you have to ask them like okay like is there a reason why like how are you feeling because what's going on in school yeah because just because it's not a a trackable visual thing doesn't mean that they're not not feeling a certain way or like experiencing Mm. something something and i think as parents like they there needs to be that communication and conversation with your with your kids as to how they are actually feeling and that's also, I think, something new, like mental health is really becoming a lot more spoken about now. Because when we were younger, I don't think it was that really openly spoken about. And you realize now how much more important it is. And I always think that about, like, if I have children, what are you going to do that's going to affect them so much more? That's the scary part for me with children. It's like, you could be doing everything you want to do, loving your children, this, this, this. Yeah. But you don't know if you just crying 
is going to be like, oh, mommy's sad, or like you arguing or something. Just little things affect children in the maddest ways and you don't realize. And I'm like, oh my God, every single thing that I do is going to affect my children. Mm-hmm. And that's so, I think that's the scariest part for me with raising a child. Yeah, it's all those little idiosyncrasies that you do, like the way you eat food, the way you handle little things, the way you react. You're, you, they're just a blank canvas and they, are, will, they will template everything you do in the most minor of ways. And some people find it cute, like, oh my God, they're so mean. You just have to get that's my child. In some other ways, it's purely toxic. Yeah. And um, some people, unfortunately, have the cognitive dissonance to not understand their toxicity being imprinted on their children. That's and they it. wonder, how did you get that? Where did you get that from? And uh, Products of their environment. Hello. You know, <laughs> it's just, um, there's a, you know, it's a hard thing when you have to reconcile two different things, like um, the capacity to address mental health issues and providing someone with the resilience and personal responsibility to deal with issues because you have to face them in different contexts. It's sometimes really hard because sometimes in life, there's stuff that I have to just blaze right through it. And, you know, I just have to put my head down and put the true grit into it. But there's some things that you have to take a proper step back and really address everything that's going on. And for some people, they have an either or attitude where I've come across it. Some people uh, go straight, give it all your best, blah, 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 personal responsibility. Um, Don't worry about nothing. Don't be soft. Be a hard person all the time. And then the other time I've heard um, people that will take every single issue and overanalyze it too much and sort of, um, what's that word? Hypochondriac. They're a bit of a hypochondriac when it comes to every single issue in their life. And they um, major in the minors too Mm. much. So it's sometimes hard to separate which things necessitate the most um, review. Yeah. Yeah. And it's emotionally draining for a lot of people as well. I'm, an overth- I'm a classic overthinker. And if you have a conversation with me from six years ago, I will probably still think about it. Uh, that's See, mad. I, yeah, that is crazy. I think a lot of people do. Like when it comes to overthinking, I mm. think I'm like not an overthinker at all. So when people tell me they're overthinking, I'm like, what are you overthinking about? Because I think about things all the time, but not about situations. So then when I think about people overthinking, I'm like, wow. So you'll be thinking about that one topic and I can imagine it becomes quite yeah. like taxing sometimes. I'll give an example. Like when I, when I'll speak to you, Rachel, and then I'll reference stuff like um, conversations we had much earlier, like when we talked mm. about what it was like for you to be in work, be in Liverpool and everything. Whilst I'm having the conversation with you, simultaneously I'm thinking about those initial conversations we had and your response to those and then your feelings towards those and then how you <laughs> represent them back out. Meanwhile, you're just probably eating your food or chilling at home, yeah, just listening to soccer or just listening to whatever, <laughs> just like through the day. And I'm just being like, I'm assessing every single scenario possible in my head that you could easily respond to or become emotional by or become interested in. So I'm like, <laughs> So, yeah so you're like literally like your mind's in overdrive whereas Rachel's is just like yep came to Liverpool it was good you calm how you do <laughs> so what would you say that you're like kind of like coping mechanisms or like how do you deal with mental health because I know you said that you were in the army cadets like did that have any effect on you or like is there anything that you do that you think is like has really helped you um honestly um i would say the number one thing that most people regardless of mental health is finding some sort of drive to wake up in the morning um if you find something you can push you reasonably well like if you can see something like you can progressively overload in in life whether it's learning a new language training um lifting weights whatever i personally think physical health plays a massive role into it for a lot of people um, I know, for instance, for example, uh, last year I had a massive incident uh, where I was um, badly, had a spinal injury in Thailand and I was immobilized for about nine weeks. I just oh couldn't walk God. and I was, in, I was to the point of like taking these really strong nerve drugs and they weren't even doing nothing. And um, it was really terrible. And I was very much in a deep, dark hole in my mind because you know, all I could see was my four walls in my room. And when I managed to get better, my physical health went better, there was a correlation between the wellness of my own health and my own positive mentality because there's something refreshing about and I understand some people put too much emphasis on it I just sort of went with the flow there was something refreshing about putting on some putting on a new cloak put some new jacket that you try out as Zara and shit actually fits quite well and you're like raw like is that me <laughs> <laughs> is that you yeah is that me like 
I think it's me. Yeah. Mom, <laughs> Mom, it's me. And, um, but it goes for different people. Um, I think for me, because I also, um, I train um, wrestling, boxing, martial arts, and I do want to be a profile when I get older. Going to training and having that camaraderie with people and seeing myself have those 1% improvements every day is a very massive thing. And I do thrive with helping others because it's a very, um, even though it's an individual sport, you do have to work within a group. And yeah. there's something endearing about being in the trenches with people, getting hit in the face. That's for me, getting hit in the face and then hitting them back. Afterwards, we hug, we hug each other out. Like, is that your thing, Hamza? <laughs> many people think. <laughs> many people think. Um, but other people have different modalities and whatever, whatever way you have to go through it, it will make life a lot more easier to wake up in the morning and just have something to look forward to because much of the dread, I think, in my personal mental health experience is waking up think, having a very motivationless or aimless week. So you had, so, had like no direction, kind of. Yeah. Um, I, I remember reading a this report about like finding culturally specific ways to tackle mental health. And one of them said like, addressing or respecting like people's religious or faith-based needs um you know some people may feel ostracized simply for their identity or their beliefs and finding some way to accommodate that um mm. is quite a good thing in terms of like um helping them feel integrated because um otherwise you tend to especially i'd say in the last couple of years it, there's been a high incidence of like particularly muslim people having a like high mental health emissions um, oh, because of like okay. different propaganda regarding the refugee crisis, Brexit, mm. um, the war on terror, all of that. And my perspective is um, it's led to something. So um, Grove and Zui, they released a 2006 paper called, um, and one of the uh, terms they used was othering. It's the institutional process in which people become othered and separated from other people. And that othering leads to then discrimination. It leads to people being excluded from the, the process of, um, social mobility and people sort of like institutional racism, but yeah. it's more the process in which it happens mm -hmm. and how people go about it. And you do see this distinct us versus them paradigm occurring and finding some way to reconcile that and make people a part of the collective body is quite helpful. And I honestly think Britain has done, if you really think about the last 20 years, 30 years, there's been a conceited effort towards reconciling these very various, sometimes conflicting religious and ethnic groups into the national body yeah, yeah i do think as much as there is a long way to go mm -hmm. in many ways i think that you do see an effort in different organizations and as a whole even though and i think people speaking up about it and see even even though there's critique all that is a way for people to see the long way that there's still to go so there's not an issue with people saying, oh, no, there's institutional racism or there's this or othering. Like, keep speaking out about it so that we can keep going. Yeah. Like, I remember uh, this we did for politics class um, about a report about how the composition of the parliament. And one, one example was white, pale and stale. Um, just typically, like, white, old, middle class men that occupy it. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, there's this rising rate of representation um, you're having it more vibrant and more representative than ever, than ever before and it's only continually increasing yeah. um, like I know Labour after 2001 had the all women shortlist and now you have a bunch of female MPs for Labour that are like they're not there just for symbol symbolic reasons they're there to do actual tangible good and I always feel mm. as if having because having quote, quote a representation just for the face of it is not going to save anyone or provide meaning, but having someone to look forward to and having someone who does tangible work provides a cause. Like, um, we all know how much um, the black diaspora in Britain was moving mad after Black Panther came out. <laughs> <laughs> we all saw it. We went to the, we went to the cinema. Street. There was kids and shit that were like, yo, they were like, what kind of forever, bro? <laughs> I know it's those little yeah. things that unite people, isn't it? And I think we you need know. more. more <laughs> we love a little representation, don't we? Yeah. But yeah, thank you. This Wait, is carry on. Yeah. Enjoyed it. This was academic. This yeah. was I just know. enjoyable to listen to. We didn't really have to do too much because you came with the facts. That's what I was going to say. You, you, um, what's the word? Enlightened us. No, you. Oh. You speak well, is basically what I'm trying to say. Eloquent, eloquent. Eloquent, Amazingly, that's it. hunty. You are great. I know, yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. <laughs> and...
yeah have a lovely day thank you guys thank you everyone we're here with joey joey darling would you like to give a little intro and say who you are for the okay. people that don't know <laughs> joey darling <laughs> i am a body positive mental health championing influencer and model and i'm also like an all-round creative because i do a bit of styling a bit of makeup but yeah you'll find me on your feed somewhere talking about love and kindness and happiness <laughs> <laughs> lovely <laughs> thank you for joining us yeah so i was like joey is definitely one person that we should get on because she's always very open she's so free to talk about it she's always there for people if they need to talk so i was like defo get joey on she'll be a great person for this conversation as well thanks and i love so, the way you guys do conversate so you know i'm here for it i just need to get my camera out with me one second That's okay <laughs> We on, we on, we on. We are on. We are on. Okay, we're away. Yeah. And I think this week as well, well, not this week in general, because mental health is always important. But mm. I think like this year with kindness, I think that's a very good one, especially with social media. And you're very big on social media. And you always speak about just like being kind and people can be horrible on social media. Yeah, hundred percent. I feel like the kindness thing. I am glad that it's come up this year because I feel like it's the best way to deal with your mental health generally, whether that's you with yourself, you with your encounters with other people. I feel like in two contexts, in a context of being kind to yourself and being kind to other people. And not only that, thinking with kindness. So you might encounter someone in an unpleasant way. Someone might not be nice to you or, you know, you might have a really unpleasant encounter with someone, but just to think kindly, I think that's key as well. So instead of straight away, your brain will like go into defense and be like, hang on, and you might get offended or, you know, you might become triggered in a situation of someone's being unkind, but to try and get your mind to think kindly and give someone the space to think, you know what, they might be having a bad day. They might be navigating something right now. And a lot of people's unkindness is complete projection. Like as human beings, I don't believe we're built to be unkind. I feel like we're loving mortar cells, if that's the right word, that are just supposed to love one another. That's, I think, how God built us. So a lot of unkindness, a lot of trolling, a lot of unpleasant encounters between humans, it's, it's projection. So just be kind, give them the space to kind of navigate it. Maybe put them in the place, depending Guys, on, you know. One sec. Sorry. Rachel. What, what what the hell? Like, it keeps calling me one sec. Oh my God. And I how, how unprofessional. On my laptop. Girls. Have hey. you never heard of Do Not Disturb, I'm, Rachel? I'm sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> Tell him, do what, he's always interrupting Niall Literally. in one way or another. Right. Sorry, yeah. I'm going to up, yeah. Point, like, think kindly, give people the room. Like, I know it's not nice when you get a, when you experience an unpleasant encounter with someone and someone can be mean or nasty or whatever, but I also believe that if you're kind and you think kindly, just think of the energy circle to you. Just keep it pure, keep it good, and then it just keeps coming back around to you. Let them deal with whatever. That's, that's the thing, because kindness is infectious. Like, if somebody does something nice to you, like, I don't know, this is how I feel, like, somebody does something nice to me, I'm like, I want to pass that on either back to them or to a different person, and I think it's so, like, you just kind of get, like, a, oh, it makes you feel nice inside. Yeah, that, with my platform, it's like, I'm not going to tell people how to live their lives. I'm not going to tell people how to navigate trauma or tell people how they should act. What I will do is work on my journey and hope that inspires people to do so. Because as you say, it's infectious. So. Yeah, that's it. And also like with the projection thing, I think that's so important for you to kind of, with your own life as well. Like somebody's being mean and you're like, what the hell? Like, yeah, I was really nice to you. Now, why are you being mean to me? Or why are you being an absolute bitch? But then you're like, oh my God, you know what? Like, this actually has nothing to do with me. Exactly. <laughs> completely detaches you from the situation and that helps you know that in yourself because you can take things personally and especially if you're not that confident in yourself which some people aren't a lot of people aren't i think a lot of people aren't so it's hard to not take things personally and understand that it's a them thing and not 
not a you thing. Yeah, a lot of people take things over the limit. Like you might say one thing and you did not mean it like that and people twist it all together and you're like, whoa, no, I really didn't mean it like that. Like Interpretation I, I, is completely coming from a whole library of catalogue of experiences that they've had. So yeah. into, and again, having a platform online, that can happen, you know. I might put out a message and someone might DM me and say, oh, this, this, this and this and I'm like, I'm sorry that you experienced it that way, but that's not the way the message was delivered. Yeah, that's not the way you meant for it to come across, but that's how they've taken it due to their own experiences. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you being on social media and being so open, was that an overnight thing or do you find it kind of a way for you to vent and cope being that open or do you just want it to inspire others or is it a mix of both? Definitely both. So I started my platform one because it was like a dear diary so yeah. this i mean this is when i had barely any followers so i would just take beautiful pictures and they would complement my thoughts and feelings at the time it was like a diary entry like a journal entry i would speak about a certain topic or an, a certain experience and just try and put it out there i felt like you know when you journal you put it down and it's gone that's how my Instagram started initially. And a lot of my motivation is my inner child. So young Joey, she had a rough ride, bless her, like a really rough ride. And I definitely know that there's girls out there now that will be experiencing the same. So I definitely wanted to use my platform for them to have like a home to come to and know that this girl who's popping on social media, who they aspire to be like, actually I experienced the exact same things that you're experiencing. So. Hold tight, be kind, and life will be sweet, don't worry. I think that's so important now, especially we're adults, we're growing up, and social media, we always speak about the positives of social media, but it's also so negative. And sometimes we don't always see the negatives because we're kind of in our bubble. We curate our own timeline of things that we want to see, but not everybody has that. I don't know what the word is. Um, they don't they won't unfollow people because they're like, oh my God, you know, you can have that addiction to wanting to see yeah. certain things, other influencers yeah. that might be as good. So you're comparing yourself to certain people or yeah. um, a certain aesthetic, but that's not actually what you are, but you're still yeah. forming your mind. And it's like, it can be very detrimental to you and your mental health. Yeah, 100%. Uh, that's another thing, like some of the girls that just curate content online, they know what they're doing that they their feeds are aesthetically perfect yeah that's where you go for your inspo but at the same time it's so aesthetically driven that it can be quite dangerous and toxic because young girls think that that's the standard that they have to live to mm -hmm. and it's not real you know putting your full face on with a perfectly steamed outfit on a perfectly curated backdrop with great lighting is great for social media and for content creation and as a job as a creative productive job but it definitely needs to be detached from the reality of that's not a standard that you need to live by you know you don't need to wake up every day expecting for your eyebrows to be perfectly laminated and for your lips to be so full and for your eyes to be lifted like just live take inspiration yeah. but no it's just surface level and I feel like in our community, in the body positive community, in the mental health community, you know, in inclusive industries that are really, really deep rooted on inclusivity and people that have been marginalized, we have substance to our platforms. And that's what I love because some of all of us, we take beautiful imagery. Our content is still beautiful, but it has substance behind it. And I think it's definitely important to break down the toxic side of the internet and the unrealistic beauty standards and life standards that can be formed on social media so i'm definitely with you on that right 100 yeah, yeah i think lately like it's interesting because i've seen two opinions so on twitter i've seen somebody like oh i hate instagram at the moment like everybody's just trying to be an influencer and create amazing content and then I seen somebody else who I followed on Instagram being like oh like I love Instagram right now like it's gone back to the, the chilled out version where everyone just posts what they want they don't care you just bash a load of pictures on you're not bothered and I felt like that was such a perfect kind of 
um, what's the word, like instance for where somebody's got control of their feed and what they want to see and somebody yeah. and somebody doesn't, doesn't like and they don't like what they see but they're, they're not going to do anything about it they're just going to still if, see it if that person's content makes you feel inadequate if it makes you feel not enough if it makes you if it triggers you like that unfollow them you have control of your timeline you might follow them again in a couple months but right now if it's making you feel like that unfollow it seriously yeah. And I think that's so important to teach younger girls or younger boys, whatever, like, but it's so important to just know, like, you are in charge of your social media as yes. much as things might pop up sponsored posts or your explore page, what you scroll through and the things that you like, that's on you. That's such a good point. I'm going to have to talk about this. That yeah. is a good point because I think we do lose sight of that. Like, mm -hmm everything is so accessible and you know every day we might follow new people a new trend might pop off or something and then I think we lose sight of the fact that hang on I can filter this myself yeah. this is up to me I control what I see in a sense of who I see you know you don't control yeah. but that's such a good point it's just the thing that you like so and i always think about this joey if you had to give advice to the younger girls coming up on on your page and even your younger self but we'll talk about that because we grew up in a different time to the girls on social media now yeah. so what would you give advice to to the younger people following you right now in terms of what generally just or? in general and you know like you say holding tight so the ups and downs of life and all that yeah just try your best to cut off the noise because it's so important to connect to yourself and i feel like i'm completely grateful for my journey and it was meant to go this way but if i could have really connected to myself and come home to myself earlier i think life would have been a bit easier for me mm -hmm. um so just focus on yourself as i say as we've just said narrow down your feeds make it so that you feel at home on social media make it so that you're surrounded by like-minded people people that look like you and really lock into who you are what you are what you like what you want to do because as we grow and if you are from a marginalized community or background i.e body type body shape race gender sexuality i think life is double hard because you're trying to navigate and grow, but at the same time, the world is telling you that what you are or how you're doing something is wrong. So you've got the double difficulty. So curate your social media so that you feel at home. Number one, so important. Number two, hold tight. Just experience what you're experiencing. Love yourself enough to know that bad times pass and focus on yourself so that you know who you are and you know what you're about and just keep rolling with the punches because life is good life, <laughs> is, life good. is good it is. i think, <laughs> There's so I, think that's, world. I think that's so interesting as well because like you look back and you're like oh like i wish i'd done this or i wish i'd realized this earlier and and not thought like this but then that's also like shaped your experience if you get me like and shaped who you are now yes. like yeah. as, as, sh as shitty as it can be sometimes you have to experience these things to then to know what Just you want to see to know who you, you want to be yeah exactly and to know like the standards you don't want to allow for yourself and your future you know uh, some of us that have been through a lot of trauma yes it was uncomfortable and sometimes it can lead to a lot of work afterwards i.e having to process the trauma therapy you know connecting to yourself um but at the same time it definitely gives you insight into what you do and don't want in your life and it shapes you as a person mm. i think a lot of us that have been through shit are so much more compassionate we're so much more understanding we have so much more room for love because maybe it's been lacking in parts of us um yeah definitely with you on that one Mimi. yeah and it just kind of i think as much as we're here now and we can talk about all these things, it kind of shows our growth and we're able to help other people. And it's quite nice, isn't it? Like, oh, we've been through the shit and here we are, guys. 
<laughs> I, on the other side, like, and I think, you know, even people from privilege, they will experience their own difficulties as well. Yeah. So every single person walking this earth, whether their life looks easy or not, will experience their own difficulties. So no one's alone. No yeah it. literally i always say that you never know what somebody's going through never just think yeah. it's because somebody's smiling you think it's all perfect and that's it listen we're all going through our own shit so let people do their thing and do you find when people message you because you are that open do you find it sometimes it's draining or do you just enjoy being able to do that yeah no definitely um a hundred percent and i get burnt out quite easily because as much as i am open I'm not, how do I explain this? Because I feel like this is something I am navigating right now and starting to learn about myself right now. I always thought that I was the life and soul of the party. I could chat to anyone and I can hold a room down. I can entertain a lot of people, but I'm finding now I get burnt out when people require access to me so much. And I think that is because my platform and the nature of it means that you know, I do a therap- at least one therapy session a day in my DMs. Yeah. And then if we go offline, then I have family stuff of my own. I have my own stuff. I have friends that need help. I have an apartment that I have to maintain, you know. I feel like I'm never off at the moment, which mm. I am finding is detrimental to me and my mental health because I find when I burn out, my thought processes get a bit mashed up and, you know, my patience narrows and I'm just not great I'm running on a low battery so I have to make sure and I have been in the last couple of weeks especially since lockdown because everyone's active that I have to set boundaries and I won't reply to dms every day but I'll definitely get back to people and I definitely get back to my comments as much as I can but I make sure I prioritize myself and as much as I'm there for everyone, I need to be there for myself as well. So I definitely enjoy being able to be there for people. But that's why I'm trying to focus on curating posts that can talk to people and inspire people so that I don't have to do as much in my DMs, if you like. You can straight away just there. Get- yeah, um, but I, you know, I do filter through my DMs and obviously if someone's really struggling with something, I will get back to them straight away because you don't know the nature of this, how sensitive their situation is. Um, but yeah, it's definitely hard, especially with 60 something thousand followers, you know, my DMs every day are full. So it's, it's, it's a large scale. I don't know how some of the bigger, bigger influencers do it. I know, you know I can imagine it very difficult. The questions feature helps so much because even if someone doesn't want you to answer publicly, you can just reply to them straight away privately. Yeah. On a message. Trying to use the questions feature more because that definitely helps right that is interesting yeah it's that whole thing isn't it just like making sure that you're okay before you give access to anybody else like before you take on anybody else's problems because you'll be no use to anybody if you're like you said burnt out like you you need to save yourself first that's what yeah so <laughs> no, I feel like my laptop keeps yeah so I guess that's like some of your coping mechanisms and so when you have some of your lower days what are some of your coping mechanisms um a bubble bath Ooh. and then yeah. self-care wait away self, self-care is what I do well cleanliness and self-care so if I'm having a down day I have to clean up a little bit my space has to be clear around me um and then I will light some incense, burn some sage, get a bubble bath. I just need to slow down and pause. Yeah. Because when I'm having a bad day, there's too, I'm pr- trying to process too much information. I'm trying to move too fast. I need to slow down. I need to come back home to myself, listen to what I need and give myself that. So some days I'll be that busy that I haven't eaten until six o'clock. And I'm like, what are you doing, fam? Sort yourself yeah. out. So at the moment the key is just stopping pausing slowing down for a little bit and it might be that i just have to slow down for an hour figure out what i need and then i can carry on but it might be that no i need to cut off now and just have an evening to myself or a day to myself and just slow down 100 percent. like when i'm feeling 
because when I am feeling low it's because I'm low on energy and I'm burning out yeah. that's literally what it is I mean obviously as females we have to navigate hormones at certain times of the month that doesn't help Definitely. but actually really helping my mental health moment because it gives me no choice but to yeah. no choice physically I've always struggled with like menstrual cramps and stuff so I've literally just come off my period now hence why I'm so full of energy because it's like a little recoup <laughs> for me literally, it is. what do you guys do when you're like yeah I think it? also for me is self-care so I just kind of manage through that do yeah. some facial stuff a little mask all those sorts of things for me as well singing and dancing Singing yes do you know what mine is put my headphones in yeah. put on like just like random like old music maybe like Miley Cyrus shit like that and just clean my room yeah, yeah. and yeah. make sure my space is tidy and nice and yeah uh, me, uh, clear space clear mind tidy space tidy mind so yes me, anyway. I don't know if that's because I am creative and my brain's at like this rainbow that's always full of ideas <laughs> it needs to be like just a different level yeah totally yeah but I hear that and then music slowing down self-care Definitely yeah I it. think I think it's really important as well that you know what works for you and everybody has yeah. their own kind of ways of dealing with things and coping but as long as you have something and you're not just like continuously going on a straight line like you like you said at the beginning I don't think we'd had it recording then but it life goes up and down and that's okay and you need to just adjust what you do to to yeah, that kind of peaks and trust so when you're up it's good everything's wavy when you're coming down and it, if you do come down after you've been up you can be a bit like oh no I want to stay up there <laughs> ride the wave you know take Literally. it down relax restore your energy because you're going to go back up it's going to be great again but you need this downtime it's important yeah yeah. Well, Joanne, well thank yeah, you so thank much you. for joining us. Thank it you. was lovely. Yeah, it was so <laughs> that oh, was yeah. such a lovely chat. It was. Yeah. I feel so, like this is a, a really nice episode. It's like there's loads of different perspectives and experiences on it, which is nice. So yeah, definitely. You guys, and I will push go off sis till my last thank breath. Thank you okay. very much. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bye. lovely. All right, girl. Bye. Bye. Guys, what? this is Onyx. And is there... Onyx is, and like I said this before, one of the nicest people that I know. Thank you. That Look at him. Isn't he like a, <laughs> a sunflower? <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Wow. Person. Ready? It's fake, but. You don't need to pay attention to that. You didn't have to say that. You didn't have to do that. Yeah, just you know, a beautiful keep soul. Real, keep it real on the Go Off Sis podcast, innit? Facts. Facts. Facts only. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. Yeah. Wow. This is Onyx, and today we're talking about mental health. Um, so you are our final guest. Some would say best or last, but I'm not going to say that. I mean, okay, we, you never. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I guess we'll just jump straight in. What does mental health mean to you and what is, has your experience of it been? Yeah. I'd Boom. say what mental health means to me is like, it's your foundation for being able to intake and outtake rather health health healthfully or unhealthily like like the world that we live in and how we operate it's very on a mind playing field mind and physical playing field so like being able to work that the most efficiently to be able to get what feels good to you and you know to be able to progress and make movements through life healthfully like not health is, is it's uh, yeah, it's just another foundation of who you are. Like, I believe there's four elements. Like, there's your body, your mind, your emotions, and your spirit. And your mind is just as important as any other one. Like, Definitely. Yeah. And my experience of mental health, like, I feel like I've always been quite a 
reflective person since I was like mad young, mad young. So like, it's been something before they even had the term mental health. Like, like I've got like a relationship with anxiety and depression and there's many ways of like dealing with it. Like it's if you're dealing with it or if it's dealing with you, that's the thing and understanding your power you can control any any aspect of yourself. You just got to figure it out. How. Well, you can do anything. You just got to figure it out. How. I strongly believe that. Like, yeah, one hundred percent. I think it's so yeah. different as well. Like we're talking about mental health this year and kindness and all those sorts of things. And I think mental health is something that we need to know how to deal with it on our own. But I guess it's so different with men mm. when people are saying like, "Man up" or "Boys will be boys," mm. and some of those things can be very difficult. Mm. Um, do you think that that, like you say, from very young, you were dealing with that or has it been difficult as a man or a boy, like navigating that throughout life? Most definitely. Like, I think particularly with older men, because okay. since the young men, my mom's always been like, yo, something's in your mind, something emotionally bothers you, like chat to me about it. Be honest with yourself and this which I'm blessed to have had. And I, mm. but I understand many of people did not have that they had like the whole yeah man up don't be a girl but then also I was like but then what is a girl then like why would they not want to be a girl like what's bad about being a girl yeah like and yeah it's mainly it's been particular in other men but also particular in me because it's like growing up not understanding like yeah like your your independent your self-independence and being able to go well this is me and this is them like you're more just trying to like fit in and this and you're growing around other people like your your society around you well like school times it's like the biggest thing you've got well as a kid is the main thing you got really so like that relationship with that is mad important and powerful to you at the time but yeah i feel like just oh well, yeah i lost your chain of thought <laughs> <No. laughs> i lose your chain of thought but that's the, the story of my life. It, it's still going somewhere. Oh, okay. another thing, yeah. Another thing. I'm not good to swear because when I get passionate about stuff, I start oh, to... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, by all means. Bless. Yeah. Love <laughs> Man, we go crazy. Yeah. Very cool. Cool. But yeah, so would you say that, like, I know you said it's about kind of, like, learning to control those certain aspects and those certain feelings and not let mm. them control you so would you say that that's something you've mastered or something that you're still working on or like what's your current yeah. relationship with it i think the more i'm the more i master it the more to understand there is like there's more you, you can master it better and better so it's also always going to be a grown relationship but it's like it does that level of are you sinking or are you swimming like that is it's more important to be over it like if you're under it then <clears throat> drastic measures you got to do your thing to get to get up on it um and also to like stay up on it but also understanding that like as you grow as a person so will it i don't like a question which is like a mad question but like will it ever be fully gone will it, will it ever be fully gone like i don't know some mm -hmm. people say yes some people say no it's something that you live with and you learn to control more and this that and the other but then that's what they say still doesn't answer it for me um but i'd say like i'm so probably in the best place mentally that i've been ever and like it's powerful but I understand, like, I've got the capacity to go back to that other side. And I know that can happen. So that just gives me more inspiration to work harder, to be on top of it more than to be, yeah, I just work on my mental health more. Mm. Yeah. Important. yeah. Um, also, like, I would say with kindness and all that, I think right now in society, a lot of younger people are still battling with a lot of things. And so how would you see like some coping mechanisms and stuff like that are for, I don't know, people in general? I'd say the number one thing, yeah, is to be honest with yourself. Mm. You have to be honest with yourself. Mm. Like resisting who you are 
you can't because that's who you are. You're going to be with who you are all the time. Like, be honest if you feel this way. Like, it's fine. Like, it's completely fine, especially for younger people. Probably the things that have caused that, we ain't even you're doing. Yeah. Like, these, like, things like, like, depression and anxiety and all these things are, like, a lot of them are very, like, the root of it is when you're a child. That's yeah. a lot of things that, like, you got to understand where you came from to understand where you are now. And that bridge is so deep because there's one thing understanding, like, your life and your being. And then there's understanding, okay, your parents and how they are. Because, like, we're lucky. We are so blessed to, like, with how big mental health is now. But yeah, the generation yeah. before us aren't. And it's, I think it's very apparent. Like, we think our oh, uh, young people today are struggling with mental health and this, that, and the other. No, young people are aware that we are struggling with mental health. We know how to tag these things with, okay, this is related to that. This, this, this is to do with my mind and this, that, this, that, and the other. It's not just, like, oh, I feel a bit nervous or, like, uh, I just can't sleep. That's just how it is. Like, like nah, like, and we're not accepting this as our norm. Because yeah, we've we're got aware. The awareness. Yeah, we've got the awareness. Like, we can separate this to who we are, mm. which is, it's a blessing. And I feel like, yeah, the next generation of kids, like, I feel like, well, hopefully we implement, like, the importance of mental health just on a wider scope like idealistically you should be teaching kids about mental health before you teach them about how rivers are formed or, or when where what you started or x y and z like this should be a, a standard thing of well-being like yeah, how to be how to be a healthy human you need to be a healthy human before you be a student like mm. yeah it's crazy you were talking about that like so different within like cultural norms and um mm like within let's say the black community or things like that it's just like or it's just it's taboo to speak about in many ways um mm -hmm. people don't realize how detrimental it can be to so many people um oh, yeah. yeah and it's very difficult for older people or even girls you just have to be a strong woman and that can be such a burden on so many people you just have to get on with life go to work do things and I don't know it's just a difficult thing i think in society yeah a hundred percent see like with when it comes to culture mm -hmm. being like the intersectionality bringing culture into mental health like <clears throat> this surge of mental health is very popular within like um i wouldn't say western or just european white countries like it's became popular here but it's not very popular in other countries in x y and z mm. but also when speaking of like when it comes to like people of color within these countries there's their stance within these countries like often more than often it's ethnic people who are of who are closer to the poverty line and that's the thing when living in poverty, that's a whole oppression itself. When you when you're living in a in a, a poverty lifestyle, you haven't got time to think about why you're nervous or this that and the other or why, like why you can't sleep as often. You're you're on survival. You're on survival time. You need to make sure, like, your rent gets paid. There's food on the table. You've got these constant things that are more drastic to you. When you are financially balanced, you have that access to think about ex to think about other things. Yeah. In this time like that is it's deep poverty itself is a heavy oppression and the worst thing about it is that they feed each other mm. living in a poverty lifestyle it gives you more it, it it brings more damage gives you more reason to be nervous which then can evolve into like anxiety and sadness consistent sadness that can with a contribution of other things can form into depression but you haven't got time to think about it you just got to think You're about definitely. It. I need to my kids i need to make sure the rent, i make, need to make sure the bill's paid which is sad, it's disgusting, but that's the harsh reality. Of, yeah, the economical world that we live in. So, uh, I just, but that's the thing like, a stronger mind 
is a more powerful tool for you as a whole being, but a more powerful tool for you to to fear the wicked way out of poverty. Yes, there is like systematic like systematic things that will place you in poverty and keep you in poverty. Like for example, like if you're from a certain area, and if if um, it says in your CV you're from a certain area, that can mm, this person's from they got that postcode. Uh, 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 that's a bit. It's hard. It's hard to escape poverty. Like it, it is set that way. It's needed within a like in um economical when the economy and the patriarchy form together people need to be financially oppressed like for people to stay financially yeah like sovereign so i get it well yeah, yeah. Sad. that's such an interesting path to kind of go down as well like the how mental health ties into like poverty and oppression in different mm-hmm. areas and i think that's not maybe something that people will always think of like sometimes mm. it's just like okay people suffer from mental health and, and and it happens to some people it might not happen to others but like mm. to consider the fact that things like this can cause it or make it worse um and don't and don't help it is, is a really interesting Definitely. thing to consider which i think even i personally had never really thought about it like that mm. so it's interesting to hear that yeah i think like the bottom line is your mind is with you all the time. It affects every aspect of your life, every aspect of your life. Like you can't, it's a part of who you are, your mind. Like not all the thoughts that come with it, but your mind itself is with you everywhere. It, it has to do with everything, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Well, I believe so. But, um, yeah, no, and I think yeah. people don't realize how important your mental health is it's just as important as your regular health you know and me i was mentioning the other day like and not even the other day today why am i am um, even saying this but it's like if your kid wants to go to school and sometimes they might say oh i have a headache but it's like you sometimes say oh i don't want to go to school today but it's just a matter of why you know mm-hmm. it's like if you don't feel like going to school today you think about why not what's going on in school you just kind of think why not is something going on in school you just think about it in a different kind of way yeah and you don't think of something's going on with with them like with your child like you just think oh right maybe they're being bullied maybe mm. they don't want to do a piggy class today maybe they feel sick it's never the thought of like oh, okay maybe their mind is not not in the right space for this and i think that's yeah. interesting how you said onyx that your mum was always very supportive and understanding of that but yeah. you can also appreciate that some parents might not. And like you said, it's because of the way that their generation was because they weren't aware of mental health. And now suddenly they do have to be aware of it, but mm. they, they aren't. Yeah. Yeah. True. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something I think that we now have to be more aware of going into this. Yeah, we do, like, we, with the acknowledgements of it, like, with seeing how, how vital it is, if you're choosing to carry on, like, I mean, that's on you, but say if you've got kids, that's a whole other being, like, and that's one thing, like, I see, it's quite a common term, like, that, like, par- the parents' attitude towards the kids, they're like, oh, well, I'll carry on this technique, because, like, I turned out fine, but mm-hmm. why do you, like, like one thing my mum's always stressed on me is like, don't become like me, become better than me. Like, Ooh. become better than my example. Like, yeah, definitely. Yeah, she like, she's done so much for me to be, like, elevated and higher. Like in her terms and terms that I agree with myself. Like, so yeah, I just think like, want better, do better for your kids. Like, don't just accept what you've been through. Like, yeah. And we're also saying like there's so many ways and things that we've seen that while we love our parents so much, the things that we have to kind of unlearn and do again. And just because we've seen these things, but we've also seen some little negative impacts that it can have on us and on society. So we can just make little tweaks within society so that it doesn't affect the next generation. Because we just want to grow again because we wanted to do better. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. And that's the... 
the blariness with the word better, it's like it's subjective to everyone. So we can't be well. A question if we can like okay, we all agree this is better, let's all move this move forward and this that and the other. Because mm. a lot of people a lot of people's attitudes are like paying attention to me- paying attention to mental health and like, okay, well, I might not go to work today because I need to, today to do for myself and this, that and the other. A lot of people's attitude to that is, okay, that's soft, that's weak, that's X, Y, and Z. And do you think that nah, it's better to just be able to firm it and carry on and do X, Y, and Z? But less, honest to God, like, I, my opinion, I don't think that's best in general. But if you know you better than I know you, so you get me? So as long as, like, you're doing your definition of what you define best, mm. I'm happy with that. Like, that's cool. But... Don't let old information block you from learning new information because that's, that's ignorance. That's ignorance. And you, you're, you're not growing. Like, and yeah. if you're not growing, then you're dead, but you're living. Like, everything alive yeah. grows. <laughs> everything alive grows. Like, that's one of the main, like, teachings of nature. Everything that's alive grows. If you're not, if you're not growing, then you're dead. Mm. So, yeah. That's a wow, lot. that was lovely. I, yeah, all this just... <laughs> Making my mind be, whoa, Onyx, what? <laughs> I feel like I want to get that tattooed. You're dead, but you're living. Uh, yeah, Ooh. man, like, it's true. Mm. It was our life. Yeah, serious. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us and giving your two cents on the, on the matter and your experience. Like, we appreciate that you've opened up to us and talked about that, so thank you so much. Nah, Definitely. hey. Thank you so much for having me on and giving a, you know, sharing your platform with me to like, you know, share my little two cents, share what like I define this better and hopefully that resonates with other people and help other people grow. You get me? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Seriously. Thank you what very a, much. What a kind guy. What a kind guy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I just want to say, yeah, big up you too for the movement you've been making with your podcast. I seen you hit like you done your thing. You, you hit one k on Instagram. You add your your one year thing. You get me to make movements, and it's amazing. And like, oh, thank I'm you very to, very much. Right to me, step in, add me a little contribution to that. Like, oh, uh, anytime. We love you. You know that. Massive love. Right. Yeah, you see a lot. Like, thank you. Oh, <laughs> I feel emotional. <laughs> Sorry to have you on Onyx. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. So. There we had Hamza, Joey, and Onyx, all very kind. <laughs> nah, they were so nice to speak to, like all three yeah. of them. And it was such um, varied perspectives. Like I think we touched on so many different aspects, like um, culture, social media, childhood, fucking poverty, economical factors. We so really that was- did. That was fun. Not fun, but fun. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. No, it was. It was a very interesting topic. It was lovely to speak to them. And do you know what, too? It was an easy conversation. Like, they all came in and I think we chose the most amazing people to speak to for this conversation, for this yeah. topic. A hundred percent. hundred percent. We so did yeah. well. <laughs> we did all right. <laughs> so, okay, you did that and I'm going to go like this. Get us? Because I'm bald. So you flipped your hair and I'm just scratching my bald head. <laughs> anyway, so guys, thank you for joining us. Thank you for tapping that link wherever you're watching YouTube or listening on SoundCloud, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts. You're the real G. You've been listening to the Go Off Podcast. I'm Mimi. She's and Rachel. I'm Rachel. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm going to introduce you now if that's all right. Yeah, go ahead. She's Rachel. And we're out of here. Have a great week. And we love you lots like jelly tots. And remember, guys, be kind. It's infectious. Okay. Bye, ho. Bye. <laughs>